Okay, in this video, we are going to have another look at the Raspberry Pi Pico, which has an RP2040 microcontroller on board. And you can see I have the module plugged into a breakout board. Now it has terminal strips, so you can hook up a wire to each one of the pins, it has screw terminals. It also has pin headers, so you can take measurements with a scope or a meter. Now each GPIO pin has a corresponding LED. You can see I have, have a little program running, a little wigwag program. I'm energizing GP2 and GP3 in a wigwag style. So the LEDs indicate output, they also indicate input, so it's very handy. Now we could run a bunch of programming languages on the RP2040. We could run MicroPython, we could run McCrisp 4th, or Zip 2 4th, or PicoMite Basic, or C. Now on this particular uh, RP2040, I'm running PicoMite Basic. Now you could download it online, just search for PicoMite Basic and you'll see uh, the, the download page. So you download the .uf2 file and to program it into the microcontroller you hold down the push button, the boot push button, then you plug in the USB connector and the RP2040 will look like a flash drive. Then you drag and drop the .uf2 file into the microcontroller and it will run and when it's running properly you'll see this heartbeat LED blinking so you know PicoMite Basic is running on the RP2040. Okay, many of you are thinking he's running BASIC. Now I've been there and done that. And a lot of you remember back in the circuit seller days with Steve Ciarcia and all his projects. Or maybe some of you will remember Jan Axelson and her book 8051-8052 running BASIC. Now back then IBM brought out the IBM PC. It was running at 4.77 MHz and we thought that was pretty quick. So now we're running BASIC on the 8051 at 11.059 megahertz. A lot of you remember going out and buying that crystal. So now we have the RP2040 and it's running at 133 megahertz. Big difference and we're running basic at that speed. Now the RP2040 has two PIO blocks. Now this is high speed GPIO. Now each one of these blocks has four state machines. So we have a total of eight state machines. So you think of it as eight little microcontrollers, very simple microcontrollers running at a high speed and they're standalone so they don't take any resources out of the microcontroller. So no matter what programming language you're using, the PIO will always run at the same speed. Now if you're running a program and you think there's a speed problem, we could overclock the RP2040, we could overclock it up to 378 megahertz. So next we're going to have a look at that, how we could overclock the Pico, the RP2040, to 378 megahertz. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. And if I hit OK, you see I get a prompt from the PicoMite. So we could ask what the clock speed is. We could send it a command. So right now it's running at 133 megahertz. And we could do some printing. We'll say 1 over 7. We'll do some math. So we could change the clock speed. Now that's an option. So we type option and then CPU speed. And we give it the clock speed that we want. So we'll go from 378. It's in kilohertz. It's going to reboot. Now we could ask again the speed. So now we're overclocked at 378 megahertz. So we could take the temperature when it's running at that speed. It's 25. It's around 25.7 degrees. So we'll stop. And we'll change it back. So we'll back to option, CPU, speed, and we'll go back to 133. Three boots. Now we'll take the temperature running at that speed. You can see it's a lot lower. So running at a higher speed, she's running with more current. So it's running at a higher temperature. So that's how we can overclock the RP2040 is pretty simple just one command and we overclock it to 378 megahertz okay if you're into robotics you could run PicoMite on this board at 133 megahertz with no problem I've been using it now this is the maker pi RP2040 so here's the microcontroller the RP2040 right now I'm powering it through the USB port but you could also power it through a lipo battery there's a connection here and it has a charging circuitry or through a power supply so there's three different options for power and the circuitry on board is smart it will pick the correct one now we have a motor driver so here's motor one motor two here's the connections for the motor and we have four push buttons so we can manually go forward and reverse on, on the on the motors for testing 
and then we can use computer control, PWM, for speed. It has four connections for servo motors. We have a beeper, we have two push buttons, GP20, GP21. We have a reset push button and a boot push button for programming. And around the perimeter, we have seven Grove connections. Now each Grove connection has 3.3 volts in ground and then two GPIO pins. And on the back, it shows all the functions of all the Grove pins. It has two LEDs, RGB LEDs, so we could use them for status. So that's, that's the board there. It's pretty simple. So you can run Picomite on here and get your robotic projects up and running. Okay, just for demo purposes, I've connected up one of these micro servos up to one of the connections on the board. I'm running a little test program. It's doing three settings. There's 0, 90, and 180. And there's an array of LEDs on the board. You can use them for status. I got them set up so it's showing the three positions. So there's 180. It goes back to 0, 90, and 180. So it's a little test program just to demonstrate how we could use this uh, board to run a servo. Now the main purpose of this video was to show you how you could build a precise GPIO bitstream using BASIC. So I have my scope hooked up to GPIO pin 1. That's going to be the output of my bitstream. And this is the code that I'm running. Now basically it's an array and it has six numbers. And each one of those numbers is a microsecond value. So that's going to determine the bitstream coming out of the GP1. So next I'll show you a little diagram to show you how this bitstream works. Okay, this is the GPIO bitstream that I want to create. And if you look at the bottom, I've created an array with six numbers in the array. The name of the array is called demo. And five means we start from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the bitstream I'm going to get when I run it. So we're going to start with a GPIO pin being zero. That's where we start. Then we're going to go high for 100 microseconds. That's the first number. Then we're going to go low for 200 microseconds. That's the second number then high for 50 microseconds, then low for 500, high for 400, then it's going to drop down low, then after 20 microseconds we're going to stop. That's when it's going to jump back into the program. So we could have a delay in here, any type of delay uh, for it to go back into the program. So when we run this, this array, the bitstream array, this is what we're going to get on our GPIO pin. Okay, next, I am going to run my bitstream program, and I'll show you the output on my scope. So there's the output, and you can see the first pulse, it's 100 microseconds, it's pretty precise, then it drops down for 200 microseconds, then it goes up for 50, then it goes down, now I'll move over my scope, it didn't fit in the scope, so I moved it over, so there's my 500 microseconds low, then it goes high for 400 microseconds, and you can see it's pretty precise, and the resolution is 1 microsecond, so I changed the 50 value in the array to 1, and you can see the 1 microsecond pulse, it's pretty clean, and it's pretty accurate. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to run PicoMite Basic on RP2040. Now what we did here in this video would have been unheard of back in the 8051 days. So this is my last video on my series on the Raspberry Pi Pico, running PicoMite. So I hope it inspired some people out there to get their project up and running.